on cornerofthegalaxy.com. It's time for another episode of Corner of the Galaxy from the Box, the show that gets you behind the scenes of the LA Galaxy and into the minds of soccer reporters and MLS experts. Your hosts for the day are Corner of the Galaxy's Josh Gessman and LA Times soccer reporter Kevin Baxter. Let's start the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy from the box on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Coming to you on Monday, June 20th. Uh, Everybody observing Juneteenth today. Uh, Hope you are uh, having a good day. Hope everybody enjoyed the LA Galaxy's come from behind 1-1 draw against the Portland Timbers. Maybe you're happy. Those players seem relatively jazzed about how the whole thing went. We want to talk about that because I think as fans and observers, there's more to that than just saying, yes, that was good or no, that wasn't good. So uh, we're certainly going to dive into that Portland game, take a whole bunch of look at it. We're getting you ready for the LA Galaxy's Tuesday night match against Sacramento Republic as well in the U.S. Open Cup quarterfinals, uh, a big game for the LA Galaxy to help me get through all of this today he's back with the vengeance i should say it is the panda himself mr kevin baxter kev how you doing bud am i back with a vengeance what I, I, I i feel like am i vengeance? i feel like you're you're fired up today i feel like you're you're enthused i feel like because you're going to cover actual soccer again tomorrow that you're excited about it that's that's what i, I am excited about it i am excited about it but i have two questions going into this two very important questions the first one of which what is the food truck situation? Do we have vegan food? Do we have pupusas, more importantly? I think the vegan food truck was there last Open Cup game. I yes. don't know that okay. pupusas was there, and I do not have the answer for you off the top of my head. So maybe somebody can give us a heads up in, in one of the chat rooms or something like that, um, and we can we can figure out if, if, if that whole thing will, will work or not. Hopefully it does. I mean, hopefully we well, can get some good food. But I had pupusas on Saturday, so I, I felt... By the way, I would like to be... Point, this, is, this is good, Kevin. You're going to like this. Um, I was beaten to the food truck for the first time this year i was like not the first person in line to get pupusas do you know who beat me it wasn't damien no it wasn't damien and i usually beat him to the stadium so it wasn't damien calhoun wasn't scott french it wasn't anybody in our press box it was a lower it was a lower level press person so that means it was a bigger name it was somebody doing the game somebody calling the game it was hercules it was hercules go it was hercules gomez Hercules Gomez. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Well, so, he he growing up in Oxnard, he he's probably very familiar with pupusas. So. so so I know he doesn't really know who I am, but I saw him walking back from the food truck already. He was like again, he was about like thirty seconds in front of me, or maybe two minutes in front of me, and he was already walking back with his pupusas. And I looked at him like, Herc, you got the pupusas already? He's like, you know it, man. So there was you know we had a moment there. That was a pupusa moment, if there ever was. If I should have been. I should have been wearing my my pupusa hat, and I think that would have made, let him know that I was a cool guy to talk to. That's what I. That's what. I, in fact, you know what? I'm doing the rest of the show with my pupusa hat on. So. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Right. Good. Well, second thing is not really a question. It's more uh, something we need to take care of you and I and, mm-hmm. and the fans. Um, now that Greg Vanny is uh, apparently going to take my suggestion or insistence and, and play Dayon and Chicharito together, uh-huh. I think that we need to come up with a nickname. And I had a couple of ideas to start. We have Dayon Jovalich, right, and Chicharito. Right. So we got to put those together, come up with some sort of a nickname. I thought Deo. 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 No. Deo. Okay. No, okay. Or no. we have Del Rito, like Del Rito. <laughs> Dayan <laughs> and Chicharito Derito. The, these are getting worse, and I'm worried you're going to get canceled. And, and, so and the last one. Uh-huh. The last one. Then I thought, you know, Chicharito is really the front man in this band, right? right. So Chicharito should come first, but it, it doesn't go with Yovlitz. I had 
Chichilich. Chichilich was was kind of where I was I was leaning. Um, but okay. no, I would say I would say if you're me, El Trafico. El Tra- <laughs> I think that one's taken. Um, I think if if you were me and you talked to Greg Vanny after this, I'm not so sure I would be sitting there trying to come up with a nickname for putting those two guys together because. I think he was concerned about some of the things that he saw over the 60 minutes. We'll talk about that because that's really a really important focus on this. Um, and I'll have a question for, for fans, uh, for listeners alike, which is, you know, what do you think you saw over 60 minutes that makes you believe that putting those two players together is, is okay? We'll talk about that. That's what I want to get into, but don't answer it now. But what makes you think that those two worked well together on Saturday night in the 1-1 one, one draw? I, I, before we get too far ahead, there's a couple things. One, first announcement is is that we are still uh, having our shirts uh, for sale. Cornerofthegalaxy.com, click the uh, shop button there. Uh, and we have two shirts that are new, which is the, the Pato Hammer Panda Cannon Miles one, right? Why, and then, why, why, why the, the billion on that really bothers me. Why am I third? Why are you third? <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky you weren't fifth. Let's put it that way. All right? <laughs> I'm you know? lucky I'm on the shirt. Right? I, I thought about leaving you off. Um, no, it's because the P and the H have to touch each other, ch- touch each other don't you know? It's innuendo. We don't know what it's suggesting, but it's something. So, you know, pay attention to it. Um, So that's there. We have that shirt. And then we have the stadium concession shirt, which is sort of a little joke play. But I would also like to point out, and a lot of people have figured this out already, Kevin. Every shirt we've made is currently for sale on the website. If you go there, you can get any of them. All the ones from 2018, from 2017, 2019. The ugliest shirt ever created, which thank God nobody has purchased recently. The one that's Panda and Pato in the morning. The oh, ugliest that's the shirt. Best one. That's the, the best one. The ugliest shirt is also there as well. Um, so you can that's do that. The but best one. Every, buy that, everybody. Old school shirt. <laughs> Old school shirt. Everything. But all that helps us. So go pick a shirt that you like. Pick a couple. Pick three, whatever. Order those. Um, they get printed up and they get sent to you directly. So that's that's the first announcement. The second announcement is... Uh, I don't know if everybody was paying attention, but on Friday, so we had a show on Thursday night with the Hammer. Uh, I hinted at something possibly going on in the next couple of days, and something did on Friday. So I was at the stadium, uh, and if you went and saw my my Instagram stories, uh, I was at the stadium on Friday. I was there with my podcasting gear. Uh, I told Vicky, uh, who works PR for the LA Galaxy, Vicky Mercado, I'm like, I'm bringing a wagon. That's how much gear I had. Uh, so I had my big wagon, uh, and she ushered me in. We went into the elevator, and we went into one of the event suites on the south side. I got to see the gorgeous field layout in front of me. That We will talk about that field. I just got there. Uh, and I set up all of my podcast gear, and I, and I was ready to go. And I put three GoPros in there as well, which means that there should be a video component to this eventually as well. But I was fortunate enough to sit down and talk to Mr. Sasha Kleshton. Um, so Sasha had just got done with training, really interesting conversation with him. Um, and so that's going to be coming out here sometime this week. I don't know when I'm going to get to it hundred percent, Kevin, cause there's a lot of stuff I need to edit and, and sort of, you know, make, make look good. And I don't know how good the video is going to look. It's all just shot on GoPros from stationary angles. It's not like it's the best thing, but it's something I wanted to have some video component of, you know, our chat and what we did. So I was up there, um, and it was, uh, it was entertaining. Sasha's great. Um, and I think very enlightening too. So we'll, we'll, we can talk about that after and, it comes and, out, but. And, and he talked to you, uh, you guys talked a little bit, not to give it a while, but you talked a little bit about his salary and, and I, I was did. curious if he asked you for a loan. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't. We did. It's always interesting whenever you want to talk salary and some players would be very, I think, standoffish on that point. And I was ready for that. I, I wouldn't be upset if somebody's like, I don't talk about how much money I make and blah, 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 the whole deal. And I'm not going to get into that. That was not Sasha's reaction at all. So really interesting reaction, as a matter yeah, of fact. Don't give it away. To I know me, that was one of the biggest parts of that. Interview. It was. I told you about it. And it was really it was good. Yeah. it was super interesting. Um, there's another thing that's going on. And I don't have the video up, but I'm going to pull the video on Thursday. Um, but the cannon, Sophie, the cannon, you know, she, she has the Highbury squad, right? The Highbury squad, which she talks everything arsenal. Well, she had, she had Jonathan bond on the show. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of really interesting, uh, little tidbits. She told me I could pull some stuff. So for Thursday show, I'm going to try to pull s- some little things. Um, but I've seen, I've seen a large portion of it already and Jonathan bond is on there. There's a reason for it. Um, I'll let her sort of explain that more whenever it all happens, but, um, some really fun stuff there. So that's coming up as well. Then we have a lot of stuff that's like coming up i feel like um so yeah that's 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 so do, right. do, do you do you like arsenal i can i personally cannot cheer for a team with nicknamed the gunners given given current events 
I mean, I I'm, I, like I feel like I feel like I am smart enough to separate those things and put it into the historical sense and understand where they come from and why they have those names and the whole sorts of things. And the fact is that they're gunners as in cannons uh, and not necessarily, you know, um, you know, I would say AR-15s. So I think I can probably separate that. That has nothing to do with why I do or do not root for Arsenal. I don't have a Premier League team, thank God. Um, and so I get to ignore I got, I large portions of that. No, I got one for you. No, I'm good. Thanks. Who do you who who are you going to suggest besides Man City? It can't be Man City. If it was going to be Leeds, I, I pay attention no, to Jesse Marsh. It was going to be Man City. That's the only team no, in the league. No, no, absolutely not. So, uh, and yeah, and and c- the commercial underground says Sophie sat with Larry Morgan, not on Twitter at the game. Larry grabbed grabbed yes, the tickets that we have, oh, and they were there. I got a I got an Arsenal story for you. When I, I was in uh, in uh, Manchester the last time for. Uh, see a Man City game, of course. Right. I'd seen Art. I was supposed to go there to see uh, the Merseyside Derby. And if people don't know, be very careful if you book a trip to see a Premier League team. That Sky Sports can change the schedule, literally within I think three weeks of a game of a fixture. Right. So we had bought our tickets way ahead of time. We planned our trip. We were going to go see Liverpool Everton at Goodison Park. And literally, when we were in the air, they changed the schedule. Right. And so when we got there, it wasn't Liverpool. At uh, Everton, in fact, the game had been moved a day up, and it was going to be Arsenal, uh, Everton. Right. So we went to see that, and then we came back to Manchester and uh, hung out there for a while. We were going to see a City game. Turned out, City Arsenal, and in the hotel we were at, in the Marriott, we were at, we had a very nice room. And the Marriott people came to us uh, and said, "We're sorry, but we have to take over the whole second floor. We have a big party coming in, and they all want to be on the second floor. We're going to move you to another room." And our personnel will move all of your stuff. You don't have to do anything, but we need to take up the second floor. And I said to the worker, it's Arsenal, right? She said, I can't tell you who it is. Well, that night at at the bar, we saw the whole Arsenal coaching staff yep. there in their gear. So um, obviously Arsenal. They, they, they were trying to stay undercover. Room. They were trying to stay undercover yeah. by wearing their yeah, Arsenal hiding, gear. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the, the hotel worker couldn't tell us who was coming, but they were walking through wearing all their Arsenal gear. Uh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's my brush with greatness that, that, that is, that is a, that is pretty nice one. Well, let's, let's get talking a little bit about the, uh, the Portland game. Um, because I think this is an interesting, we had, we had theorized Kevin on, on Thursday, uh, uh, hammer and I, that we, that the LA galaxy should win this game and it was time they beat a team they were supposed to beat. Now I will say something about Portland. I think they played one of their better games of the year against the LA Galaxy. Now, that doesn't mean a lot to Galaxy fans, but sometimes you have to point out whenever a team plays well. I thought Portland played their brand of what they try to do, which is sit back and absorb and look for and exploit chances whenever they have them. I thought they played it really well. Um, and this is a team that was in MLS Cup last year. It was funny. I was listening to some of the, the reaction to, to Portland uh, drawing the LA Galaxy, and it's a lot about not talking about the LA Galaxy, which is interesting. Um, so it, it's a lot talking about how Portland has maybe been this sleeping team here for a little while, and maybe they're on their way back. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. Um, but it's a very smart team, um, and so I thought they played well. I will say that the LA Galaxy, Kevin, did not play well. Um, I thought that there were a lot of parts and pieces to this that didn't go off the way they, they were supposed to, and that goes with, you know... Uh, Victor Vasquez going out in the first 30 minutes of the game. Um, so there's a lot of little things that sort of stand out to me that didn't work right and didn't correct. So let's I'll start with the starting lineup and then we'll start talking about it here, Kevin. Um, the starting lineup included Chicharito at the top, Samuel Grancer on the left, Victor Vasquez in the center, Kevin Cabral on the right hand side in the midfield, Mark Delgado and Ryan Revelison taking in those defensive mid uh, number eight roles there. Raheem Edwards, uh, which uh, fun note, Raheem Edwards' name was spelled wrong on the back of his jersey. Uh, Derek Williams, Nick Depew, and Julian Araujo uh, with Jonathan Bond in goal. So that was our starting lineup. Uh, that's what we got to see um, on the field, and that stayed that way for about 30 minutes until Victor Vasquez went down. Now, now, I'm gonna I'm gonna rant here for a second, Kev. So so give me just one second. I promise I'll, I'll give you a nice long time um, to, to, to respond. Uh, I watched, I watched this game. Obviously I was there. I watched the entire game. I watched all the things that happened and there were some pretty big plays in this one is Victor Vasquez almost scored in the first, you know, 15, 16 minute, I think in the 16th minute is whenever this happened. Uh, and the ball came back and there was a rebound back and he went to go get it. And, and Malialba um, tripped him whenever he was going for it. And there was a penalty shout. Uh, now, uh, uh, Joe Dickerson, was was pretty atrocious in this game, and he didn't give that. And VAR said that they didn't see a clear and obvious error in it, um, and so they said there's no penalty in that. I probably agree with that one. But Victor Vasquez had this. Sam Grancier in the second half 
Kevin, probably had a penalty kick. Uh, if Joe Dickerson hadn't determined, and this was according to the pool reporter question, hadn't determined that Sam Grancier instigated the contact, um, which is really interesting for a player who's running full speed, um, trying to get around a defender, that somehow he instigates the contact when the defender missed the ball. Um, I never understand that, and I don't think anybody can explain it. So there's that play. If you watch the highlights of this game, Kevin, you would think the first 37 minutes didn't happen. MLS and their replay and their ability to put together highlights is so broken. Um, it's something I hope Apple TV finds and says, you're not allowed to touch us anymore because you suck at it. Because whoever is putting together the highlights didn't show either of those plays, which were huge turning points in both of those games, in this game, right? There were real scoring chances that were left out of this game on the highlights package, all because Kevin, oh, it didn't fit under the four minutes. Oh, it's so bad whenever, oh, we can't have it if it's not over four. It has to stay under, th under four minutes. It's ridiculous. And people should call out MLS for their hackery in some of these highlights. There, that's it. Continue. After you. What do you think? Oh, well, I what I'm troubled by is once again, Victor Vasquez goes out. He's having a difficult year with injuries. Um, you know, we I, I think Greg knew coming in. He was a little bit fragile, a little bit older. He wanted to try to manage his time. It, it's it, it. This is a problem for the Galaxy because the team, as we know, are not very creative when he is not on the field. And it's it's a, a kind of a weird situation when you have a, a you know, a, a, a Costa and a Chicharito and some of these other players that, you know, Mark Delgado that. Everything goes through Victor Vasquez, a guy that they can't just can't keep on the field. I will say I was not there, but I was watching the game on TV, and Greg Vanny in his halftime interview uh, with TV was really, really upset. He was very disappointed. They said, what did you see on your team? And he said, I, I see a team that's coming out for three-week break and looks like they're still on break. And he said, mm -hmm. we're just sleepwalking through this game. Yep. And then he, he had one interesting comment afterwards that I know that you heard at the press conference when he said, the frustration for me is that on the day, a lot of things were disconnected and weren't clear. You're the coach. Aren't you supposed to connect things and make them clear? Yeah, but oh, oh, it's that's, a little late that's, in the season for that. That's that such. To be an yeah, but that's such crap, though. It's like one guy. It's like okay, so Kevin, you tell the players to go out and execute your plan, right? And then they don't do it. Is that your fault? Well, at some point, the co I mean, yeah, the buck stops. At there. some point, at some point, at some point in this game, is that his? He's like, this is how we're supposed to play. Then thirty minutes in, what happens is they have to change formations completely, right? I mean, we knew that that was that was coming, and Greg Vanny even said, "Why did you bring you?" Well, I asked him specifically. I said, "Victor Vasquez gets hurt." And then you bring Jovalich into this game, which gives him 60 minutes. That's a lot longer than you have in the past. What, what has he done to earn your trust in these things? Do you know what he said? He didn't say, oh, you know what? It's because he's scoring so many goals that I figured I wanted to. No, what he said was, I wanted to see for him. This was Greg. I wanted to see how those two would play together together next to each other for longer periods of time. We've done it 15, 20 minutes at a time before, and we've had some success with it. But what does it look like for 60 minutes? Because I was concerned, this is me talking for Greg Vanny. I actually have the full quotes, but I remember it specifically because he was answering my question, which he goes, I was concerned there were going to be some midfield problems. I was concerned that we weren't going to be able to control the midfield and that we were going to, that Dayon was going to have to work really hard on the defensive side to sort of plug some of those holes. Those were the things that Greg Vanny was concerned. And in no time in that question, did he answer and say, oh, but they told me that they definitely rectified those situations that I have no I don't have to worry about that anymore. There's zero chance that Greg Vanny came out of that game thinking that that Jovalich and Chicharito could play together for extended periods of time right now, which is crazy, right? Because they got a goal. Yeah. And they have 14 goals together in all competitions. But I want to go back to that last point, because when Guillermo was here, everybody, we, you and I especially, but everyone else, were very critical that Guillermo would always come to post-game press conferences and just say, I had a great game plan. The players didn't put it together. The players right. didn't follow it. The players didn't listen to me. I was a, I was brilliant once again. I am amazing, but my players just can't keep up with me because I'm so amazing. That's kind of how Guillermo sometimes came across. Well, now we have Greg Vanny saying they're disconnected. You know, things aren't clear. Well, Dude, you're halfway into your second season. When when are they going to get clear? Well, as as he pointed out, and if you've read the rest of his quotes, right, he said it was because, you know, yes, we just had three weeks off. But he goes, I didn't have 11 players to go. I didn't have enough players to go 11 v 11 until this week. He goes, so, yes, we did some training. Yes, we were able to sort of be together in a limited sense because they lose like five or six guys. And then they have all the uh, they have guys like Jalen Neal and Marcus for who fill out the roster and help them put together 11 v 11s whenever they do this stuff. Those guys are gone. Right. I think. 
think um, I think uh, some uh, Johnny Perez was gone as well. But Galaxy end up missing like nine players for this, and you have injuries to Christian, and you have injuries to Costa, right? So yes, you can say that the LA Galaxy just had three weeks off, but it's not like the team was training together for three weeks. They weren't. They weren't. And by the way, the, the guy, some of the guys you just mentioned, I don't, I, I assume that Jalen Neal and Fricanis, those guys will not be back, obviously, uh, yeah, for tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. They won't be. No, they they and, are and they are out there. Yeah. You know, I, I think that's you know when you look at the back line, you know, just look at the back line now. Who who, who are the Galaxy going to play tomorrow? Who's Vanny going to use? Because I think those guys would have had a big opportunity. This would have been a big game. Yeah, uh, yeah. But we tried to say that before, right? Minutes. You what you think? But did they in the in the previous games with lower competition? They haven't. Right. And so I really think I think you're going to see like guys like Zavaleta playing. Uh, I think you could see somebody like Derek Williams playing. I think you could see somebody like Sega Koulibaly, who Greg Vanny said should be ready for Tuesday and was on the bench and was back for the L.A. Galaxy um, sitting on the bench, which is a huge plus for them. The fact that he is not seriously injured because there was times that I think we thought it, he could have surgery. He could be out for the rest of the year type of thing. And instead, that dude is back and he could play on Tuesday, right? Well, you know, with the injuries, I don't see this as being a super deep team. It, it, it appears as if Greg does not have a lot of confidence with people like Cameron Dunbar, other guys that you might want to put in. He does with Savaleta and he has to because that back line is kind of beat up. But, uh, you know, maybe Efrain and Alvarez will, will, will get a, a much longer look. He will. But other other than that, I think it's I think it's Chicharito. I think you're right, Williams. I think Ravella's it's, it's Jovalich. Jovalich will start, right? I mean, this is this is has been Jovalich's tournament so far. He'll start. Chicharito will come off the bench. These are my my guesses for these things. But that's one of the reasons, you know, people were like, "Oh, Vanny has," you know, people are saying that Vanny. They were questioning Vanny's manhood by not starting Jovalich and Chicharito together against. Uh, Portland, and one of the reasons I thought it was a good idea not to play Jovalich is because you knew he was going to play on Tuesday night, right? Like, he is the starting striker on, well, on Tuesday you, night. You, you know what Greg told me today? Vicky Mercado, again, you mentioned Vicky, the PR person. She was very nice to get me Greg today to talk about the U.S. Open Cup, which I know we'll talk about in a minute. But one of the things he said is, I said, you know, you're, you're rotating your team. This is, by the way, this is Greg Vanny's first U.S. Open Cup. Yes, he's managed in a Canadian Championship six times, Totally different tournament. He's, he's played it. He's played in it before. He's just never right. managed it. Yes. And and we know uh, that managers treat this differently. Bruce Arena, I don't think ever really took it seriously. Correct. Maybe in the later rounds he would have, Correct. but never really took it seriously. The Galaxy did did not compete well in it. Ziggy, when he was here, and then especially in Seattle, took it very seriously. That's why they won three or four times. When Onafa was here, it was a little bit in between. He kind of was a you know going from one to the other, um, but. Greg Vanny talked about how important it could be, but he also talked about his his roster because I made the same point. Look, I don't think you guys are that deep. A lot of uh, older players, he said, not really. He said, when you look at our team, Vasquez and Kleshton, the only guys, and maybe Chicha, where age is an issue. Everyone else can play. And he said he's not really concerned about this turnaround. The Tuesday to Saturday turnaround, he said, that's plenty of time. Right. Um, the fact they're playing Tuesday, now he didn't say anything about the Portland game, but they're coming off the break. So he actually felt like, the schedule this time was was not a problem. That they had three weeks to get ready for Saturday, a couple of days to recover. Then going into next Saturday, they have five days off, or next weekend rather. So he's not really concerned about the schedule. He thinks that that, that things are actually working out pretty well for the Galaxy. Yeah, I mean, I think they moved their game to Tuesday because remember it was a Tuesday Wednesday window for Open Cup, and all the other games for Open Cup quarterfinals are on Wednesday. Yeah. It's just the Galaxy and Sacramento. There, so I think they moved it to Tuesday on purpose. Um, and knowing they were coming off three weeks, three weeks does a couple things. I mean, there's some guys who look exhausted. Efrain Alvarez looked like he was toast before he even stepped on the field. Um, and, and, you know, I think Julian Rajo, he's, he mentioned afterwards that he was dead towards the end of the game out doing all the traveling. He came back, I think on Wednesday at like 9am and went straight from the airport into training. I mean, that's like, he was back with Mexico Wednesday and then, you know, Wednesday, as soon as he got to the, the field, he jumped out there and was joined training, uh, whenever he got out there. So he's tired, you know, Lear Dam, uh, I, you know, Revelis and Revelis and travels a ton of miles, man. Whenever you look at the games that he plays and what he does and he's playing for, he usually starts and goes 90 minutes from Madagascar. So he's one of those guys that, that puts a ton of money. So there are some guys I think that have some miles on their legs right now that maybe get a little bit of a blow. Um, somebody like Julian Araujo, maybe he doesn't start. Uh, against Sacramento Republic. Maybe that's a Leardam start. Um, but you do like his energy and he's young. So maybe Greg Vanny's like, yeah, go for it. You know, get out there. But he's taking it seriously. The Portland game for me, let's let's go to this. Um, the Portland game for me comes down to this is that 
Uh, I watched 60 Minutes of Jovalic and Chicharito, and I will tell you that nothing really changed in terms of how the LA Galaxy were able to attack or break down Portland until they went to a 3-5-2, which is an argument that people make all the time. The Galaxy should play more of a 3-5-2. That's what happens in that last probably 10 minutes of the game. Um, whenever Leardam comes on, there's there's he, he's put in as the, sort of the third center back, pushes Araujo and Edwards up. Um, that puts the three and the five and then the two up with top with, with Jovalich and Efrain Alvarez is more of a, a central attacking midfielder. I mean, that's what was missing for 60 minutes was the cam in there of some sort, and there wasn't one, and there wasn't a lot of interchange between Jovalich and Chicharito. Chicharito ended up pulling out wide for me, which is not the best look. I'm fine if he's going to make runs, Kevin, wide to inside. I like wide to inside runs. I think they're awesome and I think Chicharito can really play that well but the bottom line is nobody is finding Chicharito in those wide spots to sort of make those things happen and so um, you know you can look at Chicharito I thought they created a couple good chances um, Chicharito had the one where he almost was standing on the goal line and tried to redirect the ball in and it didn't it yeah, didn't what, work impossible shot I don't know how he missed at least hitting something it just it was, went off on a diagonal it went it went the other way uh, it came back from whence it came um, so that got put out I uh, thought he had two or three really good opportunities so I think he had finished yeah. those yeah, you know, one of the highest XG shots was Derek Williams. Um, do you remember Derek Williams hit a left-footed shot from just inside the top of the box, uh, and it was saved? Oh, that yeah, it was a it was, shot. It was, it was a rocket. rocket. Yeah, it was it was a serious hit. And so Derek Williams had one of them. Jovalich ends up having the highest um, expected goal chance with his header. Um, and uh, rightfully, I, I think if you look at that, that's a, that's a goal that can be made anytime by Jovalich, right? And but they seem to come later in games. Um, whenever it comes from him. And so um, he was talking afterwards, which he's one of my favorite people to talk to after games. Maybe it's because we only talk to him whenever he scores. So he's in a good mood. I don't know that you could tell if he's in a good mood. He's very he's very sort of uh, monotone and and short, but I love his answers. And and I think Scott French said something. He goes, well, tell us about the goal. He goes, you know, I, I, you know, the whole deal. And Jovalich goes, the, uh, the goal was good. The cross was better, right? Just in, in classic sort of Jovalich. And it was. Um, this was the prime example for me, Kevin, of making the run dictate the pass, right? We talked about it so much, and we've sort of looked at it where instead of having the pass dictate the run, the run needs to dictate the pass. And and there was a game, and I forget it was a little while ago, where Douglas Costa took off and ran through the center of the field, and Chicharito saw him, and he hit him, right? And you knew before, as soon as Costa started the run that that's where the ball was going to go because that's the play that was open. That's where everything was going to to, to center on that attack. This is the same thing. If you go back and watch the replay, which I've probably watched it 30 times, if you watch Jovalich make a move to the front post, it's before Julian Araujo has hit the cross. Now, Julian Araujo is expecting Jovalich is going to make that run, so this helps. So as soon as Jovalich makes the break, Araujo is starting to push the ball forward and getting ready to whip it in. Um, and I think that if there's more of that, uh, if you can get Chicharito in those positions, and let's be very honest with Chicharito right now, Kevin, he's not in good form. He is not scoring a ton of goals. He does not look comfortable in there. It doesn't look like he's getting a ton of chances. That's a problem well, for the Sally Galaxy. I game. think there were a two or three opportunities. Again, the one that he missed, which again, it was an impossible. I don't know how it came off his foot at that angle. It was almost impossible to miss the net. But there were two or three other opportunities when it looked like he was going to make a run. The ball went behind him. Then he did make a run. The ball went in front of him. He could, there were two or three passes that there was one that he just completely stopped. And the, if he had continued, I think he would have had a good shot to, to score. It just seemed like when, when Greg talks about things just not seeming like they're in sync. Uh, you know, that might have been one of the things he talked to, he was thinking about. And by the way, you know, Jovalich is kind of uh, uh, deadpan and he's, you know, very, very few words in English. He's hilarious in Serbian. You should really talk to him in Serbian sometime. <laughs> I'm he's sure really, he, he's he, really deep. He's, he's, he's good. He's, he's a stand up comedian in Serbian, not only a chess master, and, and, but a stand up comedian, I'm sure. No, he is, he's hysterical, though. He is, he is funny. There, there was, there was one moment. Uh, where uh, where I think Damian Calhoun uh, asked uh, asked Jovalic after the game. He goes, so so whenever you score a goal, you take off your shirt and you get a yellow card. Do you have like a different celebration that you're gonna do? And and Jovalic was sort of like, yes, this was my last time with the, with the taking off the shirt. Too many yellow cards. Maybe maybe one more. Maybe one more. And it was like it just it's it's funny, right? He's he understands where he's at. But this is a guy who who puts out there and says, you know, 
I ask the question, I go, can you and Chicharito play together? And his answer is always going to be yes, because that gives him more time playing. But he's also like, hey, we've scored every time we've been on the field together, right? So how are you moron reporter? That was I'm adding the subtext. How are you morons reporter asking me this question when all we do is score goals when we're out there? Um, and he said, I'm no, happy. He said it just that way in Serbian. You did. <laughs> I did. I didn't hear yeah. it. Um, I think it's. Uh, and he said, you know, it's my pleasure to play with Chicharito. I will, you know, I will run for him. I will defend for him. I will cover for him type of thing. He's, which basically Greg Vanny said that Jovulic, if he's going to play in that position, has to do the running, has to put in the work because Chicharito can't be that guy and they can't have that guy doing it. For me, there was too much. There was, there was no interchange between them. So there's too much separation between them. I didn't like how the majority of the game went. Um, and I really think it's a matter of finding a, a central attacking midfielder of some sort to actually be able to find the ball and, and get the runs off those two guys. I, I like Jovalic. I think he's going to continue to get minutes as he should. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm starting to lean more towards the fact that Jovalic should start some games and Chicharito maybe needs a little, little break and, and needs to come in off the, off the bench a little bit, which is kind of crazy when you think well, about I it. I think that we'll see that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, Chicharito may not be, I mean, I don't know how much Greg leans on players to make those decisions or help. Chicharito may not want to do that now because he is getting close or ever so close to maybe getting a spot on that Mexican national team and he needs to get goals in a bunch. But you know, you've have been uh, your graphics have been few and far between lately. And there's that one you always love to put up about the defense. You know, they the Galaxy have only allowed uh, multiple goals twice yeah. in their last 15 games. More than one goal twice in the last 15 games. Only two teams in MLS have given up fewer goals in the Galaxy this season. So that's the good. That's the, the the silver lining to this. Well, I mean, there's even more of a silver lining to this, which is and the LA Galaxy last year won, got points, I think, one time last year from a losing position, sort of, you know, in the you allow the first goal and then you come back and either win the game um, or, or you draw the game. They've now done that twice in the last two games. That is that is not something that we have seen this LA Galaxy team for. I asked Julian Araujo about it, which was sort of, hey, so you guys are actually you know, you went down twice. You went down to Austin and you came back to win that game. You went down to Portland and you came back to to tie the game. Do you feel like there's something that, that there's a, a grittiness to you guys that you're not going to let that happen? I mean, I've always said a sign of a good team, which I think the Galaxy are a good team, although I'm I question that on a regular nightly basis, uh, basically show to show. I, it kind of depends, but I think the Galaxy are a good team. But good teams, when they don't play well, Kevin, they still get points out of something. And I think that's what we saw on Saturday, which was they didn't play well. They still managed to scrap and scrape for a point. And doing that is something that we haven't seen this Galaxy team do in quite a long time, right? Usually it's it's go down a goal and go in the trash can. And and you know what you haven't even mentioned? They could have won that game. The, 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 I think the Dupuy call was the right one. Dupuy? Uh, I, I, yeah, De, him too, both those yeah. guys together. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I, the, the TV replay showed it. It was pretty obvious. The push was not that hard. I think there was some embellishment involved. I think the, the Portland player right. went down too easily. But Nick had both hands. See, I, I didn't even... Yeah, that's that's how you went around Nick. it. I like it. Good. Yeah, uh, he had both hands on the guy's numbers when, when he pushed that. It was impossible for the referee not to make that call. I Who was I talking to? Uh, maybe it was Damien or maybe it was Scott after the game as we were walking down or something. I'm like, listen, it was the right call. It was a foul, right? And the thing is, I don't think Depew needed to do it. I don't think he needed the foul. I think he was fine. No, I think I, he had... I think he would have scored I, if he had just kept his hands on the side. I think he would have scored. Yeah, I mean, the, the deal is as a defender was never get your arms like way out away from your body so that way there it shows like a push right you can't get them in an extended version and Depew has his arms extended to create some space I don't think the defender is going to make it back in time in order to get it Nick has the height advantage so all those things but it was it was one of the good calls that Dickerson made I thought it was a foul and not only that but people were saying well why don't they review it he blew the whistle before the ball went in the net so it's not even reviewable which is another mistake by the way if you're talking about how you should referee those positions when there's goal scoring opportunities, it's best to not whistle something, let the ball go into the net and then blow the whistle afterwards. So that way you have a chance to review these things. Um, so, so the game ended one, one, but to yes. your point, the galaxy came from a losing position to put the ball in the net twice. Yeah. 
they, and they got away with a draw. It you know it was close to almost a win, and and that kind of speaks to your point of the grittiness. That would have been two goals in the last five minutes. You know, 88th minute and then three minutes into stoppage time. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I think that yeah, again, I liked the last probably 10 or 15 minutes whenever they go into a three-five-two. Maybe that's the answer. I know a lot of people have been join, jonesing for that uh, to put those guys in sort of a three-five-two. I think Vanny is going to stick with a four-two-three-one for a little bit longer. I am certainly. And he talked about the midfield again. Um, he talked about not bringing in FRI and Alvarez right away. I'm certainly of the opinion that Greg Vandy is going out and getting a central midfielder of some flavor. I don't know if that's central defensive midfielder or central attacking midfielder. I talked with Damien. I was like, well, Greg answered the central midfielder question again. And it, he said it was a cam. And Damien goes, is that what you got from it? Because whenever I was standing there, I sort of thought he was sort of hedging on it could go either way. Central defensive midfielder, central attacking midfielder. Something is going to get filled in there. Um, so I, I think that's really uh, where everything watches. The, the window's not open. The window's getting closer to opening. Um, so as that goes, I'm sure we're going to start getting some rumors and start getting some ideas of, of names that actually come through. We just we don't have that. Um, I want to show you a chart. Now, when you open yes. the window, is there yes. a screen there? Yeah, <laughs> there should be. There should be. Yeah. You, you've got to try to keep some of those guys out of here. Um, that's for sure. Uh, oh, graphics. Good. Graphics. Good. Yeah, let's get let's get to this a little bit. Let's let's be ridiculous for a couple minutes. You want to be ridiculous for a couple minutes? I just this all the time. I just want to put this out there again that Dayon Jovalic, in terms of minutes per goal, right? So how many? How you know every right now he's at every seventy one minutes, Kevin. Every seventy one minutes he's netting a goal, and now he has four goals and two hundred eighty four minutes. That's better than what Zlatan Ibrahimovic was doing for the LA Galaxy. Again, we I, we tried to we're not saying this, but we also want to point it out that what he's doing is special and that the LA galaxy need to keep getting him the ball and getting him playing minutes a hundred percent. I don't know if that means starts. And in a lot of cases for me, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't say starts. And this is just in league, by the way, this doesn't account open cup or anything else. Okay. So this is in league. So 71 um, right now, now his goals per game is 0.31. He's played. He had a lot of games at the beginning where he didn't score goals, that type of thing. So it, it's sort of different. And Zlatan was 1.03 goals per game and one goal every 87 minutes where, uh, you know, Jovalich is way down there at the bottom. So um, whenever you look at that now, Chicharito, just for comparison, is one goal every 207 minutes right now, which is a lot different than what Chicharito had been doing last year. This doesn't but feel like... The, com yeah. Combine those two and Dayan and Chicharito together are averaging a goal over 152.8 minutes. So 90 and 90 is 180, so a little more than one goal, a, a little bit inside of one goal every two games between the two Correct. if you average them. That's not great. That's, no. It's, it's okay. It's not great, though. Um, 17 it combined for 17 goals in the season when Chicharito had 17 by himself last season. Correct. Um, and missed so, a lot of time. And he, and that's sort of, and right now I don't know that you're getting the same Chicharito that you got last year. So that's, that's something to watch. You want to, you want to see designated player minutes, by the way, as much as Costa has missed to injury and as much as Cabral doesn't play full games, um, the LA galaxy are still averaging about 70% of the total available minutes being played by their designated players. Chicharito leads that with 92.1% of his total available minutes. So basically he 1350 is the total available minutes to him. And he has played 1244. Uh, if you look at Douglas Costa, Costa has, uh, out of his 1350 minutes, he's played 733 to 54.3%. And Kevin Cabral, here's the crazy thing. Kevin Cabral has played in the same number of games as Chicharito. Right. And he has 857 minutes at 63.5% of the total minutes. He has been available for every game. He has played in uh, in every game this year, but he still has only accounted for 63.5% of the total minutes. And that lines up really well with his about 60, 65 minutes when Vanny decides to to pull the plug on him. Um, so it, I'm, I'm I, I thought Cabral was very MIA. Um, I thought Grand Sear was was the better attacker um, for sure. And I think Sam Grancier was very unlucky on Saturday not to at least get like one goal. He probably could have had two or three. Um, he he's just, but he's a guy, Kevin, who we've looked at it a bunch of times, right? He's a guy who just can't finish. He's almost as bad as Cabral, except he gets the shots off, um, but he can't finish. And because he can't finish, uh, that's hurting him. If if he gets going in any sort of way, the LA Galaxy become a better team instantly. Um, and right now with Cabral and Grancier not scoring goals and not contributing to goal scoring, um, that's a hard pill to swallow to have Greg Vanny keep rolling them out on the right and the left. So, so. your midfield would be Grancier, Cabral, and Costa. Those are three guys. One can't play and two can't finish. That's 
Probably yeah. not a good combination. So Costa, and right now, by the way, is anybody missing uh, Douglas Costa? Is everybody like, oh, where's Costa? Oh man, we really, you really need. Good, has anybody said we really need Costa back? Because that sh that's not a that's not a thing right now. As a matter of fact, his seven to ten days. I think everybody's hoping it was seven to ten days until he would like sort of be back to full training and doing stuff. Right, the whole deal. Um, and and I don't think anybody's. I don't think Greg Vanny's in a hurry to get him back. I don't think fans are in a hurry to get him back. The only thing people keep asking me. Uh, and I got asked this by Damian Calhoun whenever we went in. He's like, so so Costa's loan deal is up. Do the LA Galaxy have to sign him to a contract uh, as as they sort of agreed to? And I'm like, I imagine that it's all part of the same deal. So I imagine they can't just get out of it. Um, and those yeah, are the I, types of questions fans are asking and, and reporters yeah, and, are asking right now. I think a little more attention needs to be paid on that because we talked about it a lot at the beginning of the season. Uh, and we talked about it recently. Greg Vanny, to me, seemed like he wanted Pavone and then settled on Costa. That's just the impression I got. Now, he talked very favorably about, about Costa and talked about how great he could be, and he kept mentioning if he's right, if he can stay healthy. There was a lot of sort of caveats. If he can do this, if this happens, he can be really good. I, I just never felt, and, and we, there's a history here with, with, with Gio, with uh, Gerard, with some other players that have come through where management wanted the players. They wanted the sparkly, shiny object the managers didn't necessarily want those players with right. Bruce and Sarah Ken and, and others. So I'm not ready to put that in this category yet. I'm just begging the question. How much did Greg really want him? How much did management want him? Um, and it, this this is a problem because if, if he takes a designated player spot for two years, that's a spot the Galaxy that, that is just wasted if, unless Costa starts to produce and deliver and at least play some minutes. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not sure that that's going to be the case, right? I mean, it doesn't feel like that's going to be the case. Um, it, there has to be a point where management listens to the manager. When the manager says, "I really don't want him. He doesn't fit in. Here's the guy I want. If we can't get him, here's another guy I want." Um, and, and again, I don't know. Maybe maybe this was all a, a Vanny thing. You know, Vanny doesn't the, seem to have a long history of recruiting players out of South America, and all of a sudden, a Brazilian designated player shows up on his doorstep when he had been recruiting from France all along. Well, I mean, you know, the idea, though, and I see this a lot from fans, is like, oh, we could have had, had Pavone. No, you couldn't have because his situation wasn't clear. So Pavone was never an option to the LA Galaxy. Well, so. they thought he was. And, and I'm not saying it was Pavone or Costa, I'm, uh, although it, it kind of does look like that. I'm just saying, like, we can't get Pavone. We really don't want Costa. Let's move on. Let's wait. Let's hold that spot open. Maybe somebody will come up. I mean, right now you could say that certainly by going out and getting Costa that the LA Galaxy and, and what he's produced so far that the Galaxy could have waited and they would have been in zero issues, right? They would have had an open designated player spot. Yeah. But if you remember, it was Vanny who was like, I want somebody in now because I don't want to I don't want to waste somebody's season because they don't get a preseason or they don't get to play with us and those types of things. But now he's basically Costa is missing as much games as he would have in a preseason. But and and he's not integrated well into this team right now and think about what the galaxy had done up until then a year and a year and a couple months under under vanny they got bond and williams from england they got uh, the four guys from three guys from france they were you know jovan was in france for a month at a time they were heavily invested in in recruiting and and scouting in france and then spilled over a little bit into england then all of a sudden a guy from brazil just pops up and they grab him now i know it's douglas costa and and he's a guy that you don't really need to go and scout and stuff. But it, it just seems like someone took a, a, a real hard U-turn there yeah, and turned in a different direction. But there's something else there, too, that needs to be pointed out and pointed out at length. Albert Rusnak was a target for the L.A. Galaxy. They didn't get him. Ilyich Sanchez was a target for the L.A. Galaxy, and they didn't get him. Uh, Kellen Acosta was a target for the LA Galaxy and didn't get him. They missed out on three of those guys and went to Mark Delgado after those three guys fell through. Now, maybe there's some revisionists. Maybe I'm not 100% right on that, but it was told to me that all three of those guys were targets and that they got missed out. on. All right. So when you think of that now and you look at getting Mark Delgado in there and then you look at Douglas Costa coming in, it feels like they had a net of people they were trying to get, but they couldn't get the people that they wanted. And so they settled on, and listen, I like Mark Delgado. All right. I like what he does. I like how he works. I think he needs some help. Uh, and I think that Ravelson has not been cutting it to be his help recently, but I think that there's something there that they can sort of put that together. And with those guys, with Mark Delgado in there, he was a backup to three other guys who didn't get who, who the LA galaxy couldn't land. 
Um, now, it, what you said is really interesting. And, and and if you're right, and I'm not doubting it, I'm just saying, you know, th- you know, the possibility. We don't know. We weren't in the room. But the Galaxy lost three of those four guys that you're talking about. Um, Sanchez, Acosta, and, and Rusnak. They lost those guys two conference foes. So not only yes. did they lose them, they lost them teams in their conference. This is the galaxy. This is the team that everybody wanted to play for. So we're told everybody wants to play here. The, you know, we're the big dogs. We're the guys that, 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 you know, everybody wants to be part of. They haven't won a championship or they, they haven't even been to a title game since 2014. That's the longest drought in team history. I, I the galaxy are kind of acting like they're the galaxy, but they're not, they're not maybe not the galaxy. They, right can, they can't. And so they, you, you, you can't let these players get away. Not three of them in the same off season. If you're the galaxy. Okay. So you're uh, uh, sporting Kansas city or, you know, you're Colorado. Okay. So you let some guys get away. Understandable. You're, if you're the galaxy, you got to act like the galaxy and you can't, you know, heads have to roll when that kind of stuff happens over and over again. But, but there's been no outside of just firing coaches, right? Which is not nice. a lot of accountability, not, not a, lot a lot of, of accountability. Of- so, I mean, that is, I, you know, you're, we're, we're hitting at the root of the problem here. Uh, whenever we look at that. So listen, I'm fine with that. The LA Galaxy fi- finish uh, 1-1 with Portland Timbers. Uh, they end up picking up the point, which uh, luckily uh, was still there for them to get. Uh, that puts the LA Galaxy, let's get to our Western Conference here. That puts the LA Galaxy stay in, staying in fifth. Uh, Nashville ended up losing to Sporting Kansas City, which was a little bit of a shock, 2-1 to one, um, at home for Nashville. Uh, they played very poorly. I watched some of that game. Again, there were some really bad games in here. I watched the LAFC Seattle game, and everybody can try to tell me that that was like oh it was a playoff atmosphere and all this stuff and i think it was a good game but those were also two teams coming off of a three-week break like you look at what portland is yeah i mean that's the whole thing is like you look at portland now portland seems like they're primed to move up but i just you know i don't think they're there i don't think they're at 16 points but the la galaxy for all this kevin are two wins away from matching the top score in the league right now at 30 points right so the galaxy are 24 and you're talking. You talked about LAFC in that game with Seattle. LAFC has won nine games this year, leads the league, right? They're at top of the uh, supporter shield standings. Of their nine wins, eight came against teams that do not have a winning record, and only one of their victories against Orlando City came against a team that has a winning record. They play four of their next five games against teams with winning records. LAFC could be in for a little bit of a shock. Uh, we'll finally find out how good they are. They haven't played a lot of good teams, and. The clock is ticking on the Carlos Vela thing. I mean, yeah. that team changes, may get better without Vela. We don't know, especially with Cellini coming in to provide that leadership. But when you talk about them, um, the, the, apparently the agreement is done. And uh, it's just waiting Vela's signature. I don't think LAFC is about to change the terms of that if that's what Vela is waiting for, for a guy that, that has missed 40 of the team's last uh, 71 games. Well, you, of them. you and I have talked about it. I've said if he's providing leadership, I don't see it on the field. And usually guys who are as quiet leaders show it. A, a guy who comes out of, I think, multiple El Traficos with injuries, right? You've seen this like multiple times. I just, I can't, you would have to break Chicharito's leg in four places in order to get him off the field in most of these things. You'd have to drag him off the field. And Carlos Vela is sort of like, okay, I'm out. Um, there's just something soft about him that I don't get. Um, and so I, you may be right. Maybe LAFC gets better without him if, if he decides that he's he's moving on. I think it's really, I think the fact that the LA Galaxy will be playing them again, what is it, July 8th? Yeah, it's July 8th. Yes. Um, you know, at on Bank Account on a Friday. Friday. Oh, great. Another reason I can't wait for the Apple TV deal. Um, by the way, ESPN was supposed to show the game, right? And then College World Series. And then the College World Series. I forget, was Stanford winning or losing the game by like Stanford was getting crushed. It was eleven to one when yeah. I turned the Galaxy game on. It was seventeen to two when the Galaxy game actually started. Yeah. Um and so so and it's ESPN's policy, and this has been forever, that they don't cut away from games that they're in progress. So they were always going to move they were always going to move the Galaxy game. But then it was like, it's going to be on ESPN News. And so then we're like, oh, okay. So we're t- telling everybody to go to ESPN News. Well, it's not on ESPN News. Oh, well, it's going to be on ESPN this. Oh, so everybody like goes and they're like, no, it's not this. And so eventually that Galaxy game was just streaming, just streaming on the ESPN app for a while until that baseball game got over with. That's And that was what, like 20 or 30 minutes into the game? Yeah, it's baseball. It's an inning and a half. So it took like a year. It was actually well into uh, past the 30 minute mark, way past a half hour mark when when they finally came into the game. And again, I think part of uh, ESPN's decision to do that may be twofold. And and, and uh, I'm just guessing here, but 
you know, the Heidi game, if you go back to that game when, when uh, the network pulled the Heidi game and the Raiders came back to win, right. that's something that lives in sports journalism. And ESPN right. may just say, we're never cutting away from a game. Uh, it was it was 12 to 1 yeah. in the eighth inning. Um, the other part of it is maybe contract, contractual. Uh, you know, it, it, they, NCAA may have a much uh, it, it's just their Better policy. Contract. It's just their policy. That's but, their policy. They, they, contractual thing too. The NCAA said, "Do not ever cut away from our games." And MLS doesn't have that clout. I mean, it's not hard. To, it, it's literally their policy. They don't cut away from a w- women's softball game, which, by the way, gets really good ratings compared to MLS. They don't cut away for a women's softball game for a hockey game. If it's in progress, they stay with it and they just move the other one until it comes until the whole deal. So that, by the way, was the best commercial for Apple taking over the whole programming thing that I don't know if Apple paid Stanford to get clobbered, but they could have. And it, they got all their money's worth in that in that advertising. That was amazing because I'm sitting there going, you wouldn't have this problem with Apple. You just go on and yep. you sign on. It would be right there for you and be ready for you. And the games. I'm guessing we'll actually start on time, Kevin. A 7.30 game, we'll start at 7.30. Because why? You get complete control. You get complete control of of the timing. You can start it exactly at 7.30. And and I heard, uh, you're going to know this more, so I'm going to just ask you. Sounds like Joe Totino and Kobe, they're going to keep their jobs. They're going to be available to do local broadcasts, correct? Uh, So... um, so as as it's explained to me, so technically I will say that Joe and Kobe have lost their jobs, right? Because they are local broadcast guys and there is no local broadcast, right? There is no local television contract. That being said, if the LA Galaxy want to keep Joe and Kobe, they can move them to the radio broadcast, right? And have that pay them to do the radio. And then you as an Apple TV watcher can go to Galaxy Games and select the audio for that to come down and it would work. So there's ways for them to do it. But technically speaking, they won't be on TV anymore. I, you know, Joe and Kobe are so good. Um, yeah. I don't know whether Kobe would be interested in that. He may have more opportunities than Joe, but man, I'd hate to lose those guys. Yeah, it is. Um, it, listen, I will tell you, and I haven't talked to Joe and I haven't talked to Kobe. Um, I haven't talked to most people, but I know because I've been talking about this for a while that there was nerves about what would happen with the TV contract. And I think everybody's sort of disappointed in terms of the local side of things about how it went. Um, but I think the writing was on the wall for this for a long time. So uh, that's sort of something to to. So what about the to. perpetually perky and positive Nikki K? I, I mean, there's going to be if there's if it's radio only, I don't think that they're going to have a sideline reporter. So I don't think you need that part of it because the national the quote unquote national broadcast will have that taken care of. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it makes it makes jobs go away in a lot of ways. Now, maybe Joe and Kobe could be one of the select groups of teams of broadcasters for this new um, thing, but I don't know that that means that it's not like they're going to give them every Galaxy game. If that's the case, yeah. they would have to do a bunch of different teams. So anyway, well, and the and the and Nikki the Triple P, she could be the sideline reporter for the Apple games here. Absolutely could. So I, I would imagine the way that uh, that she is it wants to do Major League Soccer that she would be searching that. I'll talk to her and find out. As a matter of fact, we can we can find that out. All right, um, we got you the standings. We got that. I know we're running a little long and a little late. Um, 621, uh, that is Tuesday night. That is going to be the LA Galaxy versus Sacramento Republic. That is the quarterfinals for the LA Galaxy uh, in the U.S. Open Cup. So that's coming up. And then uh, this weekend, uh, June 25th, it is the LA Galaxy traveling up to San Jose. That game on Unamas, TUDN, and on Twitter. So be prepared for that one, 7 p.m. on that day. And then June 29th, just four days later, LA Galaxy host Minnesota. That game uh, will be a lagalaxy.com and a Spectrum Sportsnet game. That closes out June, a busy end to a slow June. Um, well, you, and you, you said the Sacramento Galaxy game is at 621? That's a weird kickoff time. What? No, no, it's at 730. Oh, so you when, said 621. Yes, as in the date, June 21st. <laughs> Good Lord. Was it, did you, were you doing that on purpose? Or, or, yes. or I, sometimes I don't know about you. I just, I, you, you scare me. Um, so anyways, there's that. I'm trying to think if there's any other charts. You don't need to know any charts. Let's talk about no, this but game. We, 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 yeah, we got to talk about this game. Yeah, I yeah. got a lot I want to say. Yeah, the LA Galaxy uh, will host Sacramento Republic in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open Cup, uh, the game at Dignity Health Sports Park. 7.30 p.m. is the start time. That includes on the kickoff time. Yeah, on, on June 21st. Uh, 7.30 p.m. is spo- supposedly the kickoff time. Expect it a couple minutes after that, but right around 7.30. So um, you guys can know that, and that way you can go about and uh, tell everybody. Now, Kevin... We had a preview, quote unquote, preview of this game over the weekend. LA Galaxy 2 um, went up to play Sacramento Republic and Sacramento Republic beat them 2 nothing. Now, I watched some of that game, watched highlights again today. 
Um, and I will tell you, LA Galaxy 2 had every chance in the world to beat Sacramento in this game. Um, but Sacramento plays a type of soccer that will be difficult, I think, for this senior team to play against. Um, they are very much a bunker counter team. Um, they did that really well against uh, Galaxy 2. Uh, having said that galaxy two also made like one big mistake that led to, to one of the goals. And the other one was a pure counter and a penalty kick, right? It was one of those that they have speed. Um, if we look at some of their average positions and just things that sort of line up with how, um, you know, Sacramento likes to, to line up, they tend to, to have two forwards up top. They tend to pack the middle, um, of the midfield and look for those turnovers that are going across the middle. So, uh, you're looking at guys like Revelison and Delgado if they play and possibly Efrain Alvarez in the center as well. Um, those are the guys who are going to have to sort of fend this off. I am very, I think this will be a very tough test for the LA Galaxy. And we can say M Major League Soccer team versus USL team and they should win every time. But Kevin, we know that that's not always the case. So um, well, and what you do you know got? that? You know, Greg Vanish coaching staff has been debriefing the, the Galaxy 2 people, and, and it, it probably was a very advantageous thing. But not for the Republic, because the Republic didn't play the Galaxy. They played Galaxy 2, but right. Galaxy 2 played the, the, this very same team that will be at Dignity Hill Sports Park on Tuesday. Um, I, and you know that uh, there's been a lot of uh, sharing of information going on. I have my Sacramento Republic scarf, which you can't probably see that, that well here, but this is a scarf of, of this, when the Sacramento Republic was was – moments away, days away from being launched as an MLS team in February of 2021. They were supposed to start this season. They were supposed to be in MLS right now with a soccer-specific downtown stadium in Sacramento. They were given the uh, um, expansion spot in MLS in 2019. They had two years to prepare. They were moments away, days away from making the announcement when Ron Burkle, the money behind the operation, pulled out. He wound up going down to San Diego and founding the San Diego Wave. Uh, why is this important? It's important because now Sacramento has already beaten San Jose in this tournament. By the way, since 2017, and that's and remember there wasn't U.S. Open Cups in 2020 and 21, so not that many tournaments. Since 2017, they've beaten Real Salt Lake, they've beaten Seattle, they've beaten San Jose, and now they're coming for the Galaxy. Why this is important is Sacramento still thinks it's a an, an MLS city, and and I'm not going to disagree with them. Um, they have a little bit of a chip on the shoulder. Um, they're coming in here to prove that they belong in MLS. They've already beaten one MLS team. They can beat another one. They can beat the Galaxy, who, you know, it, the, the winningest professional team in U.S. history. Sacramento can come in and beat them. That's what they want to do. And and I talked to Todd Dunavit. A lot of you remember him, a five-time MLS champ. I believe five-time, four-time MLS champ with the Galaxy. I, I think he's maybe four-time with the Galaxy. I think he has six it's overall. Yeah, because he, he was in San Jose for a while. Right. So, um, and he won a U.S. Open Championship here, by the way. He said, you know, we're not, we're not going to put that on the players. We're not going to put it on the players to come in here and prove that they belong in MLS. But he did say the people in Sacramento, the fans, the supporters, believe that they're an MLS team in an MLS market. And this right. means something to them. It also means something to Todd Donovan, by the way, coming down here as the president and general manager of the Sacramento Republic. He said he still has a lot of friends here, you know, fond memories of Dignity Hill Sports Park. But he wants to win here. That would be sort of the capstone. Remember Greg Vanny coaching in the U.S. Open Cup for the first time, right? Because he in, again in Canada for all those years, he's already beaten one Galaxy legend, Landon Donovan, in the first U.S. Open Cup game. And um, just sort of to close this out, I did talk to Greg about the U.S. Open Cup because, as we mentioned earlier, different coaches have different strategies. And I was like, how do you thread that needle? How do you know when to play who? Which game is important? And he said, look, we're the Galaxy. We're about winning trophies. Um, this is the, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the MLS season. We're two wins. If we win this game, we're two wins away from us open cup and a spot in the CONCACAF champions league. This is a trophy that is right there in front of us. We need to go after that. And then he told a great story about 2016 when he was still getting his feet. What I think his first year in Toronto, 2015, I don't think he had a very good year. And then 2016, they're playing in the, in the Canadian cup, Canadian championship, their domestic cup in Vancouver, uh, the crowd is going crazy, Vanny relates, and he said that they're down late in the game, and a player scores a goal, breaks his leg, scoring the goal. And he said the stadium just went silent, and their their sideline went crazy. Toronto went on to win the Canadian Championship that year. The next year they won the treble, and he said all that goes back to that one goal in Vancouver. When they were down late, the crowd was against them. They're on the turf. A guy breaks his leg, scoring a goal. He said that was the motivation that carried them through the next two seasons. And so his his thing was, don't tell me domestic cup games aren't important. This right. one moment in time 
carried us through two seasons. This this dude gets jacked up for these games. I mean, I don't mean to be disrespectful to to, to Greg, but you can tell when he talks about it that he is serious. Um, and I've heard the 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 sort of the lip service from other coaches. Oh yeah, we're going to go out there. This is an important game. We want to win this. Greg Vanny feels that with all his heart, um, and he will he will fight you if you disagree with him. <laughs> it feels like just with this. So um, the Galaxy are very motivated. So if you want to know what I'm thinking for starting lineups, think big because I don't think Greg Vanny is worried about the turnaround time. And quite honestly, I know. Listen, um, going up to San Jose is going to be a game where the LA Galaxy are going to be tested um, in front of a crowd of, you know, hey, 50,000, sure, we'll say, at Stanford Stadium, you know, it's the game. They can't play the LA Galaxy in their own stadium. They always have to take it to Palo Alto and play it up there. There will be fireworks afterwards. Um, the field is not great. It's narrow because it's a football field. Um, the stadium is is nondescript and, and not really that great in terms of visiting and that type of thing. It has all the hallmarks of the LA Galaxy going up there unmotivated because of this Tuesday night game. Um, but I think that there's enough turnaround time that the Galaxy are going to be able to wrap their heads around it and put, it, put together a pretty you know severe challenge to a struggling San Jose team. So all this stuff matters. I think Greg could absolutely roll out a, an A-team lineup just like they were playing LAFC all over again against Sacramento Republic. I think there's going to be some changes. I think Jovovich is going to start. I think uh, Chicharito will come off the bench. Um, I think that possibly Sega Kulabali could could get the start and get back in and do that. But other than that, I mean, maybe Leardam fits in for Araujo. Maybe Araujo starts. I think Edwards still plays out there because I don't know that there's a there's a ton. Maybe maybe Gasper's in there, right? Chase Gasper, we haven't talked about a whole bunch. Um, but Gasper, maybe he starts this game just to give Edwards a little bit. But if things are tied at halftime, Greg Vanny is going to make some changes. Um, this is a tournament. This is win or go home. He says it every time. It means something. A knockout tournament means something, and he's going to be there. So that means that people need to show up too. I don't expect this is a large crowd on a Tuesday night. Um, I don't think this is going to match the uh, the 24,000 the LA Galaxy had whenever they played against LAFC in the Open Cup El Trafico. But having said that, I think this is one of the most more important games of the season because I think the LA Galaxy, when they win this, get a real chance uh, two wins away from ho- ho- hoisting a, a U.S. Open Cup. And they could potentially be playing a Division uh, Two team next time. It would be Omaha. Omaha plays Sporting Kansas City. you got to say the MLS team is favored, as, as they always are in these things. But I could see Omaha. They beat Minnesota. Why couldn't they beat Sporting Kansas City? Then the Galaxy would have another non-MLS team to play. Greg said a couple other things today when we talked, is that I mentioned, like, hey, you know, a fixture crunch, you know, how are you going to get through this? And he's like, Look at our guys. You know, we got teenagers. We, you know, Efren Alvarez right. is just, I guess he just turned 20. Um, Arajo's young. You know, the majority of these guys are under 25. Yeah. They can come back and play a couple of days later. I mean, that's not an issue. And then he said the other thing is, conversely, for these young guys at the same time, is you want them to be in these uh, knockout games. You want them to play in these games where potentially a trophy is on the line. Because if you do get to the playoffs and it's a knockout game, some of these guys have never been there before. How yeah. do they react to it? Yeah. So this is their way to to when you when he starts managing in the second half as if it's a winner go home game, which it is. Players will know how to react to that when they get in those games in October, and November. They've already been there. Hey, That's important. I, I will I will echo this one more time because actually I'll echo it until the LA Galaxy are out of the Open Cup. Uh, getting home games matters, Kevin. Getting games in the Open Cup where you have a good matchup matters. The Galaxy have had a dream matchup so far. Their one away game was to a a NISA level team um, in Cal Strikers. Um, And it was quote unquote away at a stadium where all their fans could travel down and fill up the stadium. And so it was, it was, you know, more Galaxy fans than there were uh, Cal United Strikers fans. They have had the gift of the scheduling, they've had the gift of the draw so far. They have gotten every bit of luck that you could possibly ask for in this tournament, it's time that you put that down. You're playing a USL team. You're always going to be favored over a USL team. It doesn't mean Sacramento won't be difficult, but they, they have, I mean, they have to beat Sacramento. This is a team they can beat. You know what both Todd Donovan and Greg Vanny said is that the MLS team is favored. The USL team is the underdog, which gives them an advantage. It gives them an advantage because the pressure's on the MLS team. Absolutely. As Todd Donovan said, we're playing with house money. Yeah. You know, you, it, now they, they I believe they would play Omaha uh, and because they're the central team, they would play Omaha next if Omaha wins or sporting Kansas City. Right. Do we know if that would be home or away? I think I think they're there's a, I think there's a draw for, for those. I think. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I believe that they haven't and picked that those yet. Wednesday. Yeah, we won't know the Galaxy opponent until Wednesday. Night. Exactly. The Galaxy will basically set their side of the bracket for whatever happens, right? So, um, and then we'll be able to watch on Wednesday and sort of figure out who the Galaxy's next opponent is, um, and then draws and all that sort of fun stuff. So, um, yeah, people, by the way, were saying, you know, Klinsman should be starting this. He has been the, the open cup keeper, so I would expect that he he's the open cup goalkeeper for this as well. Jonathan Bond on the bench. That seems to make 100% sense because Klinsman has been fine um, in those games. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's where it is. So, uh, one more time, LA Galaxy versus the Sacramento Republic in the quarterfinals of the U.S. Open Cup on Tuesday night. Basically, we're recording on Monday night, so tomorrow night, uh, June 21st, 7.30 p.m. is kickoff and start time, so make sure you're there at Dignity Health Sports Park. Uh, they're charging for parking. They're doing all the normal stuff that they normally do um so just keep that in mind as you're as you're getting ready to go to the game all right is there kevin is there anything else you want to talk about besides that todd dunavant should probably bring all of his things with him because he's going to be the next president of the la galaxy i will keep saying it till it happens well uh i can't tell you what todd says about that but we did talk about it um <laughs> <laughs> and he was like i'm not going to say that i'm not going to tell you you can't tell people what i said i, I just suggested that todd rent and not buy in sacramento that's all. that's all i, I agree I, I hate you know i'm on the same page with that so uh, eventually that happens he or, said he would not have let russ nick and elias sanchez get away. <laughs> that's i'm sure i'm sure that's what he said he was like he was like i would have laid down in front of their plane or their bus or where, however they were trying to escape uh, we would have made those deals. So anyway, that's it. I, I think this is going to be a really difficult game for the LA Galaxy. I, 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 that sounds, that sounds like I am like almost needling the Galaxy, saying, "Oh, well, the Galaxy aren't that good." No, I really think Sacramento is the exact type of kryptonite that will be difficult for the LA Galaxy. They, they are. They are sit back. They're a bunker. I will. They will counter through the middle. They have speed in order to exploit that. They will sit and wait for those chances. So if you're the Galaxy, do the thing that makes them come out of their shell, which is score a goal in the first ten minutes and put this game away. Right. I mean, if you score a goal in the first 10 minutes, that breaks them out of their shell. They're going to have to come after you. And then that gives you more chances to open up. I you will hear in the in the question interview whenever I get it. We talked about this point specifically and, and a little bit more in depth and at length. So anyway, that again, uh, coming up uh, later this week, whenever I get a chance to edit all that stuff. All right. All right. Are you good? I will, We're see, good. I will see you tomorrow at 621. Yeah, yes. Yes. Tomorrow, 621. Uh, okay, don't good. confuse people. 7.30 p.m. All right, 7.30 p.m. Get there as fast as you can. Traffic will be a bear, as it always is. All right, uh, anything else that you want to talk about? No, no, speaking of bears, Sacramento Republic's logo is a bear. Yeah, like the like the flag of California. So really, they're just co-opting the entire state. I like it. I like it. It takes a little machismo in order to do that, but you know, we'll, we'll allow it. We'll allow it. All right. If I kind of wish they were in MLS. I'd love to go to Sacramento. It, it wouldn't be a horrible, cool. horrible road trip. All right. If you're looking for yeah. Mr. Kevin Baxter on Twitter, it's at KBaxter11. Please head on over to uh, the LA Times where you can find all of his soccer writing and all of his sports writing. So please get on over there and check that out for Kevin at KBaxter11 at LATimes.com. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J G U E S M A N, and of course at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to Corner the galaxy.com we have our full press conference up there from saturday night's game this podcast is there our videos are there all of our other stuff is there as well so check it out corner of the galaxy.com go buy a shirt we would certainly appreciate it all right for kevin the panda backstar i'm josh pato guessman you've been listening you've been watching to corner of the galaxy from the box on corner of the galaxy.com have a great one everybody you've been listening to the corner of the galaxy podcast on corner of the galaxy.com you can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. Fans, we thank you for listening. And we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo. And on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.